So in this video, we're going to write a quadratic function into intercept form when given the x-intercepts and then another additional point that is not an intercept. Now, before we start diving in and writing the equations for these, I want to remember how our equation relates to our graph here that we were practicing in previous videos. So remember that the opposite of p and the opposite of q represent our intercepts. So we have x-intercepts of negative p comma 0 and negative q comma 0. So those represent our x-intercepts. So we're going to use that information to help us go from now information about a graph to an equation. So just keep that in the back of your head. That's what we know about intercept form. So we are now going to use that information to help us find values for a, p, and q in all of these functions. So here we're given information about a parabola with x-intercepts at 8, 0, and 2, 0. So I'm going to draw a picture of what this might look like. So here we have 2, 0, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then we have a point at 6, 16. So 1, 2, and we're going to pretend that this is 6, 16. So this graph comes up, it goes up a little bit further, and then starts to come back down. So this is what we know about our parabola currently. We know it's x-intercepts, and we know it goes through the point 6, 16. So we're going to start this process by using our x-intercepts to help us find these values for a, p, and q. So ultimately, at the end of the day, we need values for a, I'm going to put them over here, a, p, and q. And what I know right off the bat is I know that my x-intercepts relate to p and q. One x-intercept is the opposite of p, comma, zero, and the other x-intercept is the opposite of q, comma, zero. So what I'm noticing here is that my p-value must be negative 8, and my q-value must be negative 2, because it's the opposite of my two intercepts. So from here, the only thing I really have to find is a. So I'm going to write my equation with what I know so far. So I have y equals a, and I have x minus 8, because that's p, times x minus 2, which is q. So I have most of the information I need here. And that's where this point comes in. So what we're going to do is we're going to temporarily place these values into this equation in order to make this a value kind of become obvious. So we need to find the a value that makes the equation true for this particular point. So by substituting in x and y here, we're going to determine which values for a makes that point work. So here we have x is 6 and y is 16. So we're going to substitute 16 in for y. Then we have a x is 6, so 6 minus 8 and 6 minus 2. So this looks a little messy. Let's clean up some of those parentheses here. So we have a, and then it's negative 2 and 4. So 16 is equal to, that's a negative 8 and a. Then I can divide both sides by a negative 8. So that becomes a is equal to negative 2. So I now have all of my values for a, p, and q, which means I can finally write my quadratic function, which is y is equal to my a value of negative 2. Then I have x minus 8, since that's my value for p, times x minus 2, since that's my value for q. All right, example two here, they give us some different information. So they're saying that we have x-intercepts at negative 5, so negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and negative 1, and it goes through the point negative 6, negative 5. So that's going to be out here and about down here. So this particular parabola is going of something like this. We don't really know exactly, but we've got an idea that it's something that looks like that. So in order to write our quadratic function here, we're going to need to find values of a, p, and q. And I start off and I know that p and q, essentially my 
x-intercepts are opposite of p comma zero and opposite of q comma zero. So I need to take the opposite of these numbers and I will find p and q. So here we find p is a positive five and q is a positive one. So we can now go to our equation and replace what we know so far. So we have y is equal to a and then I have x plus five and x plus one. So I've got some key information there. Then from here it says this parabola goes through the point negative six comma negative five. So I'm going to use that information here to help me find my a value because I need to find the a value that makes this equation true for this particular point. So I'm going to temporarily substitute that point in there to essentially make my a value come alive. What does a have to be for negative six comma negative five to work in this particular equation? So if we substitute in, we have negative five is y, and then we have a, and then we have negative six for x, and negative six for x again. So we have negative five is equal to a times, that becomes negative one. This becomes negative six plus one, that becomes negative five. You multiply those together, that's five, so I have negative five equals 5a, divide both sides by 5, and I find a is equal to a negative 1. So now I have all of the necessary key information to write my equation. So I have y is equal to my a value of negative 1, then I have x plus my p value of 5, and x plus my q value of 1. So there's my quadratic function that represents all of the information described in that particular picture.